Hope that's late Ada. Hey, my desk is getting definitely piled high full of stuff because there's a lot of electronics engineering going on here. What's going on? It's me, Lady Ada, with me, Mr. Lady Ada. We're at my desk. It's Hello. a Sunday night. We were resting. We went for a long walk, and so we're a little we're running a little late today. Yeah. That's that's cool. Hacker clock means any time between like noon and three in the morning <laughs> for me. Like I'm up really late because it's like I can yeah. get like, so much. I'm up now. really early. Lady Ada is up really late. And we deliver this show to you every single week. Lady Ada, what is on your desk this week? Okay, so I did a lot of floppy stuff this week. Well, first off, I actually want to talk about a new whippersnapper thing. So can we just like quickly go to my computer and I'll show this. Wait, I'm going to sneeze. Yeah. Sorry. There we go. Here. (laughs) Commercial break. (laughs) This this segment brought to you by Flonase. It's a... (laughs) Flow naze for when you need to naze your flow. Okay, so right. look, I'm a little flummy. Yeah. Um, so um, Whippersnapper, which is our no-code IoT um, add-on for Adafruit IO, which lets you take boards that have Wi-Fi right now, hopefully more to yeah. come. Let me just say this. Plug-in sensors. So the, yeah, well, the cranky people who always say we make things too easy for everyone. You're going to hate this. You're, 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 you're going to love this because yeah. we're making IoT... Uh, so easy that stuff just shows up online and you can instantly do data logging and more and you don't have to go through the whole rigmarole. Rigmarole is There's a fun no word. It's up there for me with like dungarees. Yeah. Rigmarole. So um, anyways. Okay, so uh, go to my overhead and I'm going to show. If you think things were easy before, wait till you see this. Yeah, horrible. <laughs> um, okay, so this is my uh, ESP32 STQ. I also did a video. I didn't thought I'd show this live. I didn't okay, yet. great. Some people haven't seen this. And this is a BME280. So we recently added we we added more I2C devices. And you're like, wow, why did it take a month to add two more I2C devices? Because the developers working on the I.O. completely gutted and refactored how I2C sensors work so that we can dynamically add new sensors without programming the back end. Like the first sensor was totally hard coded, just like proof of concept to make sure it worked. And then we rewrote the whole thing so that there's a GitHub repo and you can see like you can add new sensors by writing a JSON file and getting an animated GIF of the sensor and like a still image and then adding the code to um, Adafruit Whippersnapper. So in theory, anyone can can add support. But anyways, um, so exciting news is that we've added a couple more sensors. So this is a BME280 and I just plugged it in and this is running the Whippersnapper um, UF2. So again, you know, no tool chain, no bosa command line it's you know drag and drop the uf2 onto here plug and play this there's a text file that shows up and you enter in your um your your deets i can see i'm gonna go to the computer while you're doing that yeah maybe let's go to the computer and i can even show there's this uh this is the the whippersnapper i don't want to open the secrets of jason because it has my stuff in it but that's where the wi-fi settings are and then um so So let's go to the computer again Uh, it's safe now. Okay. So um, this is already, you know, it's been detected, and I can add a new component. Oh, wait, so I can do an I2T scan first. And that's really handy because you can see uh, we added this tool for us, but also others. It's like you can always see what is um, plugged in, so it'll, it'll, it'll scan for you very quickly. And then you can add a new component, and then if you scroll down, you'll see uh, we now add um, the HT20, which I'm kind of covering up is over the left. BME280 and DPS310. And so we're going to be adding more and more because now it's dynamic to add more. You add the BME280 and then um, this is like a smaller 30 seconds. And then, so this browser window is smaller than I'm used to. And then, oh no. Why isn't this showing up? You Mystery. Wanna, do I don't wanna, know. Do Bug wanna, report. Do you oh. want to change the resolution since we're No, doing no, this it's thing? okay. It's just I couldn't change the, the, the rate, but I'm going to I'll send a bug report. I think it's because my resolution is smaller and the, the people testing the web app don't use a 720p. Yeah, we, we changed it for broadcasting so people could see it better. But you can see I've got um, humidity sensor data coming in already for the pressure sensor. Let me try no, it's interesting. This won't. Uh... You know what you could maybe do? You could uh, oh, yeah. hit Command minus and maybe shrink your browser screen a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, you try think that. so? Maybe. All and right. Then, and Good then try idea. And see if that does anything. 
Oh yeah, now it works. You're so smart. Okay. Now I'm just. Uh, I've just been through a lot. I know. That's a good idea to <laughs> shrink it because it's yeah. This was tested on 1080p, so I'll yeah. a bug report. This is new software. Um, but you can see um, the humidity, pressure, and temperature data is coming in instantly um, into the browser. And um, we also exported, there's only like two values. It's like, hi, you're aligned. Um, we um, we uh, added in your feeds, you can see your sensor feeds automatically. Um, they're generated now. So it's also kind of handy in case you want to like have actions or like, you know, endpoints or whatever with your feeds. This is very neat. Okay, here's a question from the chat. Yeah. Are the I, uh, ITC, or I guess I2C, mm. addresses standard enough to make guesses for the components, at least if uh, they know if they're Adafruit sensors? Yeah, it does a mix of, in the back end, you can see it does a mix of I2C address selection. Well, when you make a component, you can usually actually select. It'll automatically try to detect, sorry, if you select a BME 280, it knows that there's only two I squared C addresses, and so if it finds, it does an I squared C scan, and it finds a matching address, and it can initialize it. Like the back end software will be like, oh yeah, I found this sensor for you, and then like now you can configure it. So it's it's a mix of I squared C scanning and smarts. I mean, if you plug in the wrong sensor that has the same I squared C address, it'll fail on initialization because you'll you won't be able to initialize the sensor in the, in the built-in software. Okay, is there a limit other than the fact that addresses are seven bit integers on how many I squared C devices can be on the bus at the same time? You can have yeah, a hundred and a hundred or so. You can't use all seven bits. Some bits are are, um, are, are special, like the first ten or twenty or so. Um, in general, though, the I squared C chain you really don't want more than ten. Okay. I mean, right now we only support three, so um, that's that. I'm okay. curious uh, when folks hit that limit, what they're doing. That'll be cool because then we'll, we'll see. Well, there was a person in the forums who had like I think 15 or 20 I squared C sensors on one stomach UT bus, and they're like, that's cool. it's acting flaky. And I'm like, I squared C was meant to go like three to five inches, and you've got like five feet. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, and each each device can have uh, you know finickiness. All right, so that's. That's uh, Adafruit IO, so check that out. Uh, it's in production now. Um, I think it's cool. Yeah, everyone cool. can try this for free. Yeah, and it's like instant data logging. We're also going to change how we do the documentation to make it easier for people um, You know, as we add more sensors. And if you have sensor requests, um, I think it's on our GitHub, Adafruit. Yeah, and we then also have some videos coming up soon. Under Whippersnapper Components, um, you know, there's a couple issues, and we may not get to all of them, you know, in the order that they're in, but if you have a sensor request, an I2C sensor, especially one that we own, if we don't have it, it's going to be it's gonna take us a lot longer to add it. Um, but in the components, you can see um, I2C with the BME280 looks like. There's the, the animated GIF, um, the JSON definition, which says what the I2C addresses are and the, and the name and the type. Um, you know, you still need to have the Arduino code that does the sensing, but luckily, you know, we've already written those drivers, so that's cool. All right, next up, floppy stuff. Um, yeah, did we'll more floppies. Thank you. What's the name of this character again? I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> Flopsy, the, the floppy bunny. Um, two things. Um, so one, um, we're, I'm refactoring the Adafruit floppy library. I had to take a break for a couple of weeks and, and get, take care of stuff that was important. Um, but getting back to doing some floppy stuff this weekend, um, so I got, uh, we're trying to like figure out, you know, how to best support some hardware and, and I, I really did like all the bit banging code that I wrote, uh, I thought it was cool, but we were having some weirdnesses and we didn't know if maybe it was related to the bit banging code and so we are like, well, we should really use timers. So um, Phil B and um, Paint Your Dragon and also um, a nice person from the Arduino forum who like 10 years ago posted up the exact snippet of code I need to capture pulse widths on the SAMD51, um, put that together and, and put that into the Adafruit floppy um, GitHub repo uh, under a branch. And so now um, I'm using the SAMD51 timer to read and write floppy pulses. So they're like really picture perfect pulses. They're, they're really beautiful. And it doesn't matter what the optimization is or what the clock rate is. And so this, it's, you know, probably the right thing to do. We still have that bit bank code in there. And then the RP2040, Jepler is updating the code. So far, I think he's got reading working with the PIO 
um, interface and then writing is next. Ironically, I think writing might be easier than, than reading. Um, but for the, the SAMD51, it, it was not super fun to do, but we did, we did get it working. And so I was able to write a floppy disk um, and I can even show maybe. Yeah, um, I don't want to show this. On the computer. So on the overhead, maybe I'll just show my my exciting adventure here. Um, thank yeah. you. Eventually, I guess do a split screen or something if you want, where it's like you, the desk and the computer. Well, do we need okay. that soon? No, no, no. It's not no, exciting this is, enough. This is fine. This okay. is okay. So I know we got a lot going on here. So we got my Feather M4. So because I'm doing the same 51 and Jeff is doing the RP2040, so we're like tag teaming. Yeah. I got these cool rainbow floppy cables. Those I'm going to get cool. them with black connectors. I'm going to get them in the store. Those are cool. They're very cool. And then my floppy feather wing to my Shugart 34 pin. And then what I'm doing now is I'm actually testing out because I can't get in stock 34 pin Shugart disk drives, like your standard large floppy disk drive, which I don't have. It's behind the green screen. Um, they're, they're available on eBay. You can get them. And, like, you know, there, there's millions of them on the planet. But, like, I can't get them in quantity. Like, I don't want to bid on each one to stock in the shop. But what I can get is USB floppy drives. And USB floppy drives, as we discovered in a previous video, are just, um, you know, they come in an enclosure like this. <laughs> da, 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 da. There's like a floppy drive, and then there's the cable. And this is just um, a um, laptop floppy drive in a plastic case with a little like USB adapter thingy. Um, we don't want the USB adapter thingy because it's um, not as helpful to us for some of the hacking we're doing. Um, but, um, and also like it can't read, you know, 800K floppies or 720K floppies and it can't, it can't do, you know, rereads and it can't do flux copies and stuff. So there is definitely benefit to having, um, you know, the raw floppy available and um, using this adapter here I'm converting the 26 pin FPC to um, the Shugart connector over here with the power supply and um, okay so sorry and then I've got a diskette so put the diskette in here and then at the computer let me see I can do oh you want to go to the computer yeah I can I can write now, and you can see it's able to write and verify. Now, it seems like once in a while it has to write and um, rewrite a couple times. That's not too unusual, um, I think, even on computers. I mean, it's like you're, you're, you're blasting magnetic pulses, and, and those are weird. Um, so it's, it's not too surprising that, um, uh, you know, you, you have to rewrite a couple times. And it, it takes a while with Flux Engine, but it, it does work. And so... What's cool is that this is um, uh, kind of the first, like, like an hour ago I got this working. So this is one of the first diskettes I'm writing. And so I took an image of the diskette I made a while ago with um, text files on it. And now I was able to write it. So this is good. Um, I wanted to make sure, I mean, there's no reason why I, this wouldn't work. But it's like until you really try it and you verify it, it's like hard to know because floppy disks can be weird. The only thing that's a little bit of a, a bummer is um, these... Um, laptop floppy drives don't seem to be tuned um, up to do Mac 800K floppy um, MFM pulses. They, they kind of struggle with them, um, which is a little bit of a bummer. And I want to try some other um, diskette formats. And now that I can write, I can like create floppy disks I can read. Like you need to like have to be able to create them to read them. And my Sony disk drive is cool with writing all sorts of like weird formats, I think. So the Sony drive is happy to read 800K floppies. So what I did is I, um, I got a couple old floppies, including, so I got this, um, so you go to the overhead, and I'll show this really fast. So I got this uh, couple Mac 800K and 400K floppies. This is actually a Mac 400K. Um, and, you know, I was able to read this with the, the setup we've got here and the um, Sony drive, which, again, I can't get, you know, thousands of them to stock in the shop or hundreds of them to stock in the shop, but I, I did get one off of eBay. And then um, I took a disk image of this and I uploaded it to 
um, Internet Archive, and let me see if I can. I feel like I was being a little slow tonight. I'm gonna go to the computer. Yeah, it's being okay. So yeah, so I took a photo of the diskette drive of the diskette, and then within Internet Archive, if you set the metadata right, which only took me like seven tries, you can actually have the disk image. Um, load within the emulator and you can play this game. And this guy was kind of interesting. I saw that there's actually an interview with him. Um, he wrote a lot of uh, early educational software. So this was written in 1984. This is like one of the first Mac games. Um, extremely early, only runs on system five and earlier doesn't run on system uh, six or seven. And so actually uh, it wouldn't run on the uh, PowerBook 180. Um, But, uh, you know, it has a kind of cool sound effects and uh, graphics and like you can, you can like call people on the phone. It's got a little bit of that hypercard feel. It's not hypercard, it was handwritten. But um, yeah, for 1984, this is like a beautiful game. You know, really impressive. So um, it's cool to see that I was able to get a diskette, rip the diskette using the, our, you know, the Adafruit floppy open source, you know, Top to bottom setup. Um, it's like Magic it. Cap OS. Like that's. It does look a little. It has a little bit of. Yeah, that, like, it's like um, I'm a little. Like, like they did that for oh, a while. I'm a desk. They're God. like I'm a, like if you're gonna be a business person and you have this you know computer or PDA, we need to reproduce it exactly. Like news is a newspaper on your desk. Phone is a phone on your desk. But they, do you have to water the plant? <sighs> the plant. I don't. I mean, it's point and click, but not everything. You not know, there's everything. like a memo. Yeah. They didn't get into the Tamagotchi things quite yet, where it's like you have to water the plant. Like the plant doesn't just die in the background. Yeah, I don't. I'm to, I'll. I'll. Oh. I'll, what? Ca call someone. Well, you you need to know the the number. Call call already. I'll it's give really, you a phone number to try. No, it doesn't doesn't work that way. And then you can go outside, and then it's like you can you like you need s stock. And then I was reading this memo before. But Do you have to use Bitcoin? Yeah, this is a this is actually an <laughs> NFT. Project. I don't know. Um, nice freaking telephone. On and the then desk. you can like speed up time. Oh, okay, so it's just like real life. <laughs> I like how it actually has the correct date. That's pretty impressive. Ooh, clean up desk. Disconnect phone. Water plant. So oh, wow. There is a water plant. Yeah. This is cool. They thought of that. Take vacation. Bye. Okay. Your vacation's over. That, okay, that's, that's real time. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna go back, and the the business is just gonna be wrecked. I guess I took a four week vacation. Um, okay, oh, okay, I guess you. Oh, want the plant died. We were gone. You forgot oh, to water no. the plant. I have to water the plant. All right, maybe it's oh, gonna be man. okay now. Shoot. All right. Look, tough <laughs> game. Um, but you know, impressive. 1984, very early. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, uh, so back to um, it's cool that this. The time does work. That is kind of weird. Yeah, I know. They're like, what? How? Where are you? How did this happen? How did you get to 1922? Back in time. Yeah. Um, so anyways, this is the finish of the, the disk write read. Okay, so that's, that's the disk data. So before we move on to great search. Yeah, what else do you want to talk about? Well, I was going to um, show how to get this flex cable for the great search, this one. Okay, now you want to do great search? Yeah, I mean, is there any last questions? If not, then No, we'll... um, did you want, to, want me to show, what about that video? That no, I... no, because I ended up not. Okay, that's, no, I didn't end okay let's do the great search. Sorry. Are you ready? Yeah. Every single week, Lady Ada Users Powers of Engineering to show you how to find things on digikey.com. Things you need. It's a useful skill now because global parts shortage. Lady Ada, what are you going to show how to find this week on Disk Lady Ada? Okay, so working on my floppy disk project, I needed a special flex connector that was a little different than most. And so I thought I'd show how to. That I was actually kind of curious, like, where am I going to get this custom flex cable? And then I kind of realized. Um, while searching on DigiKey that they have like every kind of flex cable in every length and every size and every pin count. Mm. So um, like already stocked, which is which is pretty amazing. So let's look at the overhead real fast and I'll show what it is that I am using. So to connect to um, an existing laptop floppy drive, I need to get a um, FPC cable. So this is a flex cable. And the thing is, is that I actually got the wrong kind of cable here. Um, so it, I wanted it to be like, 
you know, this, this way, but it's twisted. You see how it's twisted? Because I want the contacts to be um, on the same side. I'll, see, I'll show you what I got, and then I'll show you what I, what I need. So this is what I got, and I got the wrong thing. So this is, I believe these are called AB cables, um, because the, the pin A here goes to B, like it, it goes to the opposite side. But basically there's like reverse and they're same side. They're, there's not a formal name for them, but there's two types. Either you have the contacts on the same side or you have the alternate sides. And I got the alternate side one. But what I really wanted um, was this to go like that. So I wanted it to be on the same side, like not, not like this, like twisted, you know? So it's like blue and blue. Um, and this is not a standard connector pitch. This is one, ooh, shiny. This is one millimeter pitch, not 0.5 millimeter pitch, which is much more common. Most um, displays are 0.5 millimeters, what you normally kind of deal with in electronics. So we're just going to um, look on DigiKey to show the vast number of FPC cables that are available. Um, anyways, go play uh, Make Millions with Tom Snyder. It's a fun game. It even has a Wikipedia entry. This game is more famous than you, Phil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's look for FPC. That's actually what I search for. Um, so there's the connectors and the cables. And like I said, there's 18,000 cables. There's a lot of cables. So the first thing we want to limit is the number of pins. So I just like sat there and counted, and there's 26 pins. Um, so the number of conductors is 26. And you'll see, like, you can get any number you want up to 80. There's a lot. So now we've got it down to 26 pin cables, connectors, but you'll notice that there's a lot that are fine pitch. So we want to make sure that the ones we're getting are one millimeter pitch. And because I only need a couple of them, I just want to quickly kind of get them, get this working. I'm going to only search for in stock. Um, and I also only want active parts. And then the question is the length. Um, so the exposed ends, it doesn't really matter. Like it's the, the connector is pretty big, so it's fine no matter what. The length I actually went a little bit too short here. I really want it to be around like 150 to 200 um, millimeters. I want like six to six to eight inches. The, the one I got was like four inches. It's like much too short, I've, I've determined. Um, so apply all and a lot of options came up. So I ended up getting, um, I actually kind of just sorted through price because I was a little lazy and I picked up some of these. So watch out because the image is like symbolic, right? It's, it's only like eight contacts. They're not 26. It's a, it's symbolic. Um, but I also want to make sure I've got the right termination style. So the way they describe it here are top on both sides, back around both sides, Top on one side, bottom on the other. So it top on both sides mean it's the contacts are on the top, and top and bottom means they're inverted. So I want top on both sides. So both ends have the contacts on the top. Just to make sure. And then yeah, this one that I saw, so you can see like you want it like this, where it's like blue is on the same side. Um, or this is actually a better image, so you can see. That's what I want. I want the contacts to be on the same side. So it's, you know, when it comes in and goes into my connector, it doesn't twist 90 degrees. So you just have to watch out, like, it's pin one, pin one. I don't know, just make sure. Um, but I'm going to just pick up, you know, there's, like, 3,000 in stock here. And then um, bonus round, I'll also show how you can uh, find the matching connector. Because if you look on the bottom, it actually tells you some good options. And um, this is actually pretty close to what I want. I want top contact, 26 pin, 0.1, uh, sorry, one millimeter pitch. Only thing is this is actually, while this is um, what I want, it's, uh, it's not in stock. So I'll just quickly get uh, an equivalent. So yeah, this is what I want though. It's like I got that, that wide one millimeter you can see that the pins are like kind of wider apart and you got the little nubs and the contacts you can even see the contacts they're on the top because it's top to top connector so um i'll just quickly go down here and i'll say okay well i want a uh, flex connector and i want it to be active surface mount right angle because i want it to come out the side contacts on the top 26 positions one millimeter pitch the rest is not as important it's like the color and stuff and um, 
so there were a lot of other options available, uh, which is great. And I'm going to search only in stock. It's only five options. And um, I ended up getting this one, which was, you know, there's a couple. This one has a photo, which is kind of nice. There's also this one. Um, but I like, this one looks very similar to the style that I'm used to. Um, it doesn't have a 3D, but it has this little, these pull tabs um, that work very easily. So this is what I'm going to get for the great search. All right. And that's a great search for this week. Okay, and a uh, question came in. Yes. Um, for those who are saying we're making things too easy, any chance Adafruit will make a series on how to use PIO? I notice you're using it for the floppy, and I just have seen some very cool USB host solutions with it. I definitely read and watch them. I don't have any current plans to do uh, PIO tutorials. I know that I think Sean Himmel did a guide on PIO, though. Yeah. He did a video series, so check that out. Okay. And also there's a great set of tutorials on um, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, next up, I clearly remember floppy cables had a twist of about five wires. Is that not necessary anymore? Um, that's for when you have two disk drives. I only have one, so I don't have to worry about the twist oh, that right. selects between yeah. disk A and disk B. I'm only using disk B because right. it's, it's already too much. One disk gets enough. I don't need two. Yeah, that's cool. I remember that now, too. That's right. We have, I have one. Well, it's, not, it's hidden, yeah. but yeah. Okay. Well, we have our uh, regular series of shows all week. No plan changes. We'll see everybody... On Tuesday with JP's product pick of the week, on Wednesday with 3D Hangouts with Noam Pedro, and then after that, later on, is Show and Tell, Lady Aiden and I, and then we have Ask an Engineer, Thursday, JP's Workshop, and then Friday, Deep Dive with Scott, and very soon we'll be adding some more shows and clips and people and things as we kick off 2022 together, and we all recover, and... Uh, build this world the way um, we want to together. So I'm looking forward to work with everyone. Thanks for sticking with us all this time. We'll try to keep you entertained and excited and inspired. And thank you so much for supporting us weirdos doing cool things with electronics and more. We'll see you on the socials. I have a ton of retro photos. Y'all are gonna love. Stay tuned to all the different places that we post every single day. You're gonna love them. We're gonna hack some stuff. We're gonna take some stuff apart too. We'll see you all during the week. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Have a great week. That's the song. That's the song.